Hello everyone, welcome to my another video on Databricks and in this video I am going to mount an AWS S3 bucket in Databricks. Once the mount point will be successfully created, we will read some data from the S3 bucket and also will write some data into the bucket. Now let's see the agenda in detail. So this is the overall agenda of this video. We will start by creating an AWS user with programmatic access. Then we will store the keys in Databix. After that we will create a mount point and then we will read and write some data into S3 from Databix. Now let's go to my AWS console and create an user. So as you can see I have already logged into my AWS console. Now I will go to IAM and create a user. Here I will click on users. Add users. I will give it a name. And then I will click on programmatic access. Because for this user we need access key and secret key, we have to check this checkbox. Now let's click on next. Click on attach existing policies. And we will attach S3 full access for this user. We'll click on this. Here I will add some name tag. Click on next and click on create this. So once the user will be created, you will get an access key and secret access key. These two keys are very important and you need these keys to connect to your S3 bucket from Databricks. If you are using Databricks Premium Edition, you can save these keys in Databricks Secret and access these keys in any of your notebook. But if you are not using Databricks Premium, then you can save these keys in a CSV and upload the CSV to Databricks. You should never use these keys directly into your code. So now my user is created, let's go to Databricks and upload this CSV. But before that, let's see my S3 bucket. I click on services, click on S3. And here I have two buckets. I'll click on form enterprise raw data. I have a folder called incoming for all the incoming files and here I have a file. So this file will try to read from Databricks using mount. Now I have logged into Databricks and I have already spinned up a cluster. Now let's see how to upload the CSV file. Further I will click on data. Here I click on add data. And after that you have to click on browse and select the CSV file. Once you have selected the CSV file, you have to click on upload. And by default, Databricks will upload the file in file stored slash tables folder. And if you don't want your file to be stored in tables folder, you can create a folder under file store and then you can move the file from tables folder to that folder. You can write units like commands in Databricks using percent %fs. or using the dbutils api. So here you can see I have a folder called local which I have created and under this folder I have stored my AWS keys. Let's show you the usb file. And here you can see I have a CSV file called AWS keys.csv and in this file I have stored the access key and secret access key. 
So instead of using these keys directly in my code, I'll store these keys here and then I'll read this file and fetch these keys and I'll store that keys in a uh, variable and I'll use that variable wherever I need these keys. Now let's write the code to read the AWS CSV file. File type is CSV. First header is true. And here you can see have this file, there are three fields in this file, user, access key and secret access key. Now let's fetch the keys one by one and store it into some variable. For that we have to import iceberg functions. Take it from this data frame. We use a new data mix here. And we'll select the access key field. Dot collect. So as you know collect will return a python list and in this case it will return a list of row type from the row list of row type we have to select the first element and the access key field let's run this code and you can see we have successfully stored the access key in this variable let's do the same for the secret keys here you can see i have done the same for the secret key now before sending this secret key to AWS, we have to encode this key. For that we will use a python package called url lib. So import the package here. And after that we will add this code. So what this code is doing is it will take the secret key and it will encode that key. Now let's create the mount point. For that we need the AWS S3 bucket name. So we'll store it here. In our case, the bucket name is Home Enterprise. Raw data. We'll also create a variable for the mount name we want to give. All the mounts points will be under MNT folder. Now we will add the source URI. The source URI is the unique pointer to our S3 bucket. Source URI. And 
the syntax for the source URL is the S3 and colon double slash access key colon in encoded secret access key and at the rate the AWS S3 bucket name. Now let's create the mount point. So dbutils dot fs dot mount. Then first parameter will be the source URI. And the second parameter will be the mount name. Let's run the command. And it's creating the mount point. And here you can see it returned true. That means our mount point has been successfully created. Now we will see if we are able to see the list of objects inside the S3 bucket. So the command is percent %fs ls then the path here the path is mnt slash so enterprise raw data let's run the command and here, here you can see we are able to see all the objects inside the bucket and let's see the file we have inside incoming and yes this is the file we'll just copy this path and we'll try to read this file so it will be spark dot read dot option here the header will be true dot csv and paste the path and run the command so the file has been loaded successfully let's see some of the rows the display and it will load the file in your database notebook yes it's done that means we are able to successfully access the file which is stored in our s3 bucket and we are successfully accessing this file from our database notebook we can also write files to our S3 bucket using the mount point. Let's try that. So we'll write all the distinct country names to our S3 bucket. So the code will be df dot select all country dot distinct dot write dot format the format will be packet dot save and here you have to specify the path the path will be mnt slash our bucket name slash curated Let's run the command and yes it's running so it's writing the file and here it is done now let's go to our s3 let's uh, refresh this page Yes, you can see a curated folder created here. And here is the files. That means we are able to successfully write the files from Databricks to S3. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you have learned something new. And if you find this video helpful, please share this video with your friends and colleagues. And if you have any doubts or any question regarding this video, Please connect with me via LinkedIn and ask me there, I'll try to answer that.